the Joe Rogan experience. These parts of the world where people are willing to harvest things like that, like, how did they figure that out? Who was the first guy that's like, you see that fucking beehive up there? Right. I'm going to get some of that honey, dude. <laughs> right. I'm going to dangle like, off a cliff. Yeah. Like, good luck, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying this the other day to some buddies. Who was the first guy to figure out caviar? Who's the first guy to suck off a sturgeon and be like, hmm, this is delicious? You good, know? <laughs> good point. <laughs> it's like, I guess they probably me? just eat everything they can out yeah. of a fish. Yeah. And if you catch a sturgeon, man, the whole village is eating. Yeah. I mean, some of them are nine, ten feet long. Dude, they are so big. My friends John and Jen, they live in Alberta, and mm-hmm. they, they went sturgeon fishing, and uh, they, they caught them and put them on their Instagram page. And you're looking at it like, that is a prehistoric dinosaur-type right. creature. That thing is enormous. Those big scales down the sides and Huge. down the back and the weird mouth and whiskers. They're bizarre. Yeah, there's something about the way you, you're you looking at them. You're like, I don't feel like you should be catching that. Right. Like, looks too old. Yeah. It yeah. looks like you just you should probably leave that thing alone. <laughs> they think that that might be um, one of the, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of those North American um, things that they think are monsters like Nessie, mm-hmm. you know, like like the Loch Ness monster. They sure. also have like ones in Lake Michigan. Mm-hmm. What do they call it? Lake Champlain. They have a Lake Champlain one, and they think that it might be sturgeon. Oh, that interesting. These people are seeing because you know, if especially because people have a, tend to, a tendency to exaggerate. If you see a ten foot sturgeon, you right. would think it's a twenty 50 foot long. feet long. Yeah, like, totally. Oh my God, it's a dinosaur. Totally, totally. Yeah. Do you know that? Um, this is kind of interesting. They actually had documented bull sharks stuck in the Great Lakes. Yes, I'd heard about that. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, that is nuts. Sharks swimming a thousand miles from, you know, Louisiana up rivers and getting stuck in the Great Lakes. Well, they're one of the rare sharks that can breathe fresh water, right? Mm -hmm. Catadromous. Yeah, so they go yeah in and out of in and out of fresh water. You know, they go through osmoregulation. They can get the salt out or in whatever they need, and then go into the rivers, spend time in the rivers, go back into the ocean to hunt. The inspiration for the movie Jaws was apparently bull sharks in New Jersey, a series of attacks in fresh water on right. a river system. Right, but near an ocean, I believe, right? Yeah. Like at a river mouth. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was my understanding as yeah, well. Yeah, these people were going into the river, and these bull sharks were killing them. Right. Like, in a river. Yeah. Like, what? Nowhere <laughs> safe. Nowhere <laughs> safe. Well, they're really <laughs> aggressive, right? Yeah. They have the highest testosterone of any species of shark, oh. um, and so they're just they're just... Jacked up, and, and they're like, rock. yeah, they're just ready all the time. Like they're they're bullish, and you know their shoulders are kind of arched over, and their pecs are locked, and they just they look ready at any mm. time to just snap. So, yeah, they found them all the way up in like Illinois. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. What the fuck? Like think of the temperature in Chicago right <sighs> now. You know, oh, and the shark swims all the way up there, cold blooded monster. <laughs> yeah, they're such. How do they get into the Great Lakes? Well, they used to go up the Mississippi River, but I think with all the locks that are there now in place, they just, I think the idea was that they got stuck there when they were building the locks and then they died out over time. Ah, when did, yeah. when was the last known sighting of one? I uh, think some. Two, two years ago. Oh, there you go. And I find them in, there's been one found in Iowa, Texas. Iowa? <laughs> How the fuck is a shark getting to Iowa? <laughs> Imagine, yeah, we lost Billy. He got bit by a shark. What was he surfing? Right. No, he was in Iowa. Right, right. He was plowing corn and like, got killed Billy, by a shark. Billy might be an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> in Ohio, they found him. Really? Yeah. Ohio. So Sharks on their in Ohio. Yeah. What? How do they get in Swimming Ohio? Up the river. I mean, all those rivers are connected. Yeah. Ah, damn, that's amazing. Right. <sighs> Nature finds a way. You know, when I, whenever I look at those um, videos of bears catching salmon as they're mm-hmm. jumping up the river, like, what was the first salmon thinking <laughs> when it, it decided, hey, I'm going to go up these rocks right. back to the place where I was born right. and, 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 and spawn there? Put a target on my back. Yeah. And then, oh, this gigantic fucking bear <laughs> waiting to catch me in the air. Right. Like, those images of bears catching them with their mouths as the salmon are flying through the air Stunning. trying to make it up the... It's just, but it's so weird. Like, what a weird system. It's like nature's assuring robustness. Mm-hmm. They're sure, assuring that these fragile fish don't make it. Because right. in order to be able to make that trip to the ocean and back to get through the rivers and streams to survive, you have to be rugged. Right. And so it they're ensuring the it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're going upstream, swimming against the current. Right. Oh, oh, and by the way, here's a fucking eighteen hundred pound bear <laughs> looking to eat you. <laughs> It's God, amazing. it's crazy. It's so cool. But that that is a viable system. Is this is the system that's been in place forever? Right. So strange. Right. And and that and that you know we can 
destroy that so quickly. Oh, yeah. We put man. one dam in, and that, that ruins that whole ecosystem for that river and the bears and the salmon and the spawning. And, you know, we can remedy it. We put salmon ladders in and yada, yada. But it's, it's interesting that everything seems so tough, as you just said. And at the same time, it's so fragile because we, you know, we do one thing, like put in a hydroelectric dam and it ruins the entire ecosystem. Yeah, we were in Seattle and in Seattle, there's a place where you can go and it's like underneath this bridge and there's these clear plexiglass walls Mm -hmm. and you can actually see the salmon making their way through and up the river. And they were explaining how... They had put dams in and didn't really understand the consequences of putting Mm -hmm. these dams back when they did. And then all these salmon would go to the mouth of the river where they thought they were going to go up river and it would be blocked. Right. And And they would be fucked. And they just died and they didn't breed. And so the population drastically diminished. These salmon died in like in the harbor. Yep. Like really wild stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. And that supports, you know, like that food source, that protein supports not just like the bears and the birds, but like the whole river's ecology, right? Like the river, the algae that live in the river, the little bugs that live in the algae depend on those salmon dying up that river and fertilizing the river. Yeah. So it's like the whole thing is so interconnected and then, you know, one little thing and poof. Did you, yeah, that is really crazy. (laughs) 